Hi, I'm Daryl Cagle, and this is the Cagle Cast, where we're all about editorial cartoons. And today we have one of our best podcasts ever. We actually had already posted this, and YouTube decided that it was inappropriate for people under 18 years old, which made me go back and take another look. And I did an edit, and I took out questionable parts. And what you're seeing now is probably 95% of what the original episode was. It was our most popular episode until it got the YouTube kibosh and now I think it may be our most popular one again. So uh, hey enjoy this and uh, for all you conservatives know that we will soon have a, a Biden episode that will be more satisfying to you just with conservative cartoonists so that you don't have to step outside of your bubble. So everyone enjoy our uh, best Trump cartoons podcast. Thanks. Hey everybody, I'm Daryl Cagle and this is the Cagle Cast, where we're all about editorial cartoons and we've got three great editorial cartoonists joining us, Ed Wexler, Taylor Jones, and Rick McKee. And we're going to start off with Rick McKee. Rick, this cartoon is just absolutely <laughs> great. Today we're doing our favorite Trump cartoons. These are the cartoons that all of you picked out of all of your Trumps that you like the best. And I think this is a great one. And we are sick of these two leftovers. Yeah, I appreciate it. This one uh, was actually from the last election cycle, but just run it again. I think it still works. Yeah, you'll have to upload it again to uh, run it again. Leftover cartoons for leftover can times. I, can I do that? Yeah, the word. it's good. This is Ed Wexler. Ed was a creative director at Disney for 30 years. He was a regular cartoonist for U.S. News and World Report. He drew the star-studded caricature covers for the Hollywood Reporter's Emmy and Academy Awards issues for many years. And he was nominated for an Emmy. And it's great to have you here, Ed. Thanks, Daryl. This is a wonderful Trump cartoon. Trump is thinking about Mount Rushmore, which has images of Trumps carved into it. And he says, I've done more for this country than all those guys combined. And I think that's a wonderful cartoon. Ed, you're my favorite uh, Trump caricatures. And oh, you're really great with his posture always. Well, you guys are uh, you guys are both like top-notch caricaturists. I feel like the odd man out here. Nah, so <laughs> Trump is a dumpster fire. You have him drawn in a burning dumpster, Trump Force number two, and he says, you'll never take me alive, copper, as the Manhattan DA is chasing him with an indictment. Good looking cartoon. I like the composition. When he lost the election, I had him riding off into the sunset in a flaming dumpster. But I would revisit that. There, oh, there it is. There right. it is. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very funny. That's a wonderful cartoon, <laughs> like except he did not disappear into the sunset. No, he did not. What, what, a, what a great, simple, beautiful, easy to read cartoon. I think, Ed, I appreciate it. Yeah. That is great. Cartoonists like the cartoons that don't have words. They're yeah. our favorites. Uh, here you have a drowning Republican elephant handcuffed to Trump, who is dragging him down to further drown. Um, wonderful cartoon. I notice on all of your cartoons, the small hands on Trump. I guess it, it's, I think this started in Spy Magazine back in the 1980s. Yep. Somebody made the Oh, really? And, yeah, that he had small hands. And it made him so angry. And uh, so it kind of became a thing uh, in the last election. So, you know, I think, I think they called him a small-fingered Bulgarian or something like that. Rick is right. Uh, suddenly I'm forgetting the fellow's name writing for Spy Magazine. He, uh, Kurt Anderson. Yeah. That's who, that's who wrote it. He started it. He started the whole thing. And, so it's not, yeah. it's, it's not Marco it. Rubio. Uh, no. They sort of picked up on it, but Marco Rubio did not start it. It's sort of always been a thing, and so I latched onto it because, you know, anything that annoys somebody, or especially Trump, you, you try to emphasize. And some people have accused me of making his hands smaller and smaller as I, as I go along. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, here's your Groundhog Day cartoon. Trump is waking up in the Groundhog Day position with the big alarm clock, and he says, oh, no, not again. And the alarm clock says, then put your little hand in mine. Uh, little hands. Yeah, so this appeared on, on Groundhog Day during his second impeachment. And I always try to strive to try to avoid the cliches and the typical Groundhog. And I don't always do that, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to do something a little different uh, for Groundhog Day. So this was a Groundhog Day cartoon. Yeah, that was that literally was a Groundhog Day cartoon. Oh, that's fun. 
So here you have his master's voice and the RCA Victor logo and the Victrola says, go to the Capitol. And the MAGA guy is looking very Neanderthal and has some wonderful tattoos. I love the way you put tattoos on people. No, oh, thanks. This one was my January 7th cartoon. And this came out day after the Capitol run. Well, that's great. Day after Capitol riots. How did this cartoon do? I think it did pretty well. Great cartoon, Rick. Great drawing. Thank you, Taylor. Appreciate it. You know, we just had a Left versus Right podcast where the cartoonists were just outraged by the depictions of MAGA people as being stupid. You know, I like to draw them as stupid, too. Well, I caught that podcast, and I think you did a pretty good job of showing <laughs> how that particular cartoonist liked to do the same thing for the other side. So it was a little disingenuous. So here we have Fulton County Jail arresting Trump and a little Angel McCain. And Angel McCain says, I like people who weren't captured. You know, we're trying to get high school history and social studies teachers to use our podcast when they teach about editorial cartoons. And this probably requires some explanation for the high school kids. Yeah, it's true. This one, uh, is a little bit of a throwback to the original campaign where Trump said that about John McCain, who was critical of him. And John McCain had been captured during Vietnam. And so it was a big brouhaha when Trump said that about, uh, you know, a war hero, John McCain. And that's another thing I like to do is to use people's words exactly as they say them against him. And I felt like this was an opportunity to do that for John McCain, who has since passed away, to sort of come back and use Trump's exact words that he said against him. Here you've got the Presidential <laughs> Portrait Gallery, father of our country, George Washington, freed the slaves, Abe Lincoln, and the stupid MAGA guy says, the greatest president in history. On uh, The Trump photo, which is his mugshot in striped felon garb, indicted on 37 okay. federal charges under the Espionage Act. I think this is great. I've got a neighbor who looks like that guy. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate it. And, and the thing that kills me is that that's actually what these Trump supporters say. He's the, you know, he's the greatest president in history. And he, I like him because he never tells a lie. And I'm like, oh, are we what? talking about the same guy? Yeah. It's, it just astounds me. Rick, this is a nice one. You've got Trump in prison, threatened by a big prisoner who's got an wonderful tattoo. And Trump says, what is that? Prisoner says, a non-disclosure agreement. Trump is famous for his non-disclosure agreements. Rick, you're so great at telling a story in the most simple, best way. There's there's not one element in this cartoon that doesn't help your story. It's great. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, this one, you know, this one got a little bit of blowback online. But, um, ultimately, I don't care. <laughs> 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 okay, here you have Trump behind the stupid MAGA guy who's got wonderful tattoos. And Trump says, they're not coming after me, they're coming after you, and I'm just standing in their way. Another example, just using his words, you know, that, he's, that he says. What a Mussolini kind of thing to do, you know? He's Right. Makes me crazy when he does that. Yeah. He does have nonpartisan tattoos. He does. I didn't, I didn't put any partisan tattoos on him this time. I'm sorry, Taylor, I interrupted you. That's okay. I'm usually interrupting everybody else. You know, seeing Trump on, on the podium and he's at a rally, he often actually kind of apes Mussolini in the way he... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very good, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> and the chest stuff, yeah. So here you've got the uh, Republican elephant talking to the election 24 dog, and he says, what's the matter, boy? Did Timmy fall in the well under the shadow of Trump? And... Uh, you know, this is one of those cartoons that you need to explain to the high school kids, too. Yes, that's true. This goes back, probably a, refer a pop culture reference that goes back to Lassie, and, uh, which is a show. <laughs> Way too old for these kids. But, um, I used to watch Lassie on Sunday nights, but I think Ed and I are the only ones who might have done that. Oh, Taylor did uh, that. I'm, I'm, old. I'm the oldest one here. Yeah, you're older. Uh, I remember Gramps in his truck, and, and Timmy always had to... He was his mother always made him finish drinking his milk before he got up and leave the table. John his mother was the mother on Lost in Space, too. Yeah. That's right, June Lockhart. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, you are older than us. Lassie was the rescue dog. Lassie was the smartest 
you know, person on the show, the, the dog would always come tell, you know, when Timmy fell down the well. Is there trouble, girl? Yeah. yeah. John <laughs> indicates trouble. That's why editorial cartoons are in newspapers for the old folks. That's right. In fact, Daryl, you can have a whole podcast. I guess the, the older cartoon is just talking about TV reference. Well, won't that be good for us? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh... Here you've got Trump with his tiny hands in handcuffs writing his homework paper, How I Spent My Summer. You know how he spent his summer was getting arrested and putting in the handcuffs, and I think that's a great cartoon. This was a very, very recent one, and it was just sort of trying to iconically show his historic four indictment. The number one email I get is, Dear Mr. Cagle, please explain the cartoon to me. My paper is due tomorrow. That's what we're doing. We're explaining the cartoons to you. That's what, that's what we're here for. So we're moving on to you now, Taylor. I have a picture of my wall in my living room. I have two lovely Taylor drawings on my wall. Look at that nice vulture that Steve Sachs I, 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 I recognized it immediately. Well, he told me he wanted me to hang that above my desk to remind myself of my deadlines. And I don't do that. But here I've got a Taylor Trump on my wall. Below that is a Civil War General Sherman and General Grant and uh, Robert E. Lee. They're both wonderful. Anyway, this is the Trump on my wall. I'm glad you're showing this one because I've completely forgotten about it when I was going through the selection for you. Yeah, this was done in 2015 and uh, historical cartoon, obviously needing some explanation because of the Know Nothing Party, which um, I think, I'm trying to think now, was it Millard Fillmore who ran as the Know Nothing Party? But they were kind of professing ignorance on slavery, on immigration, everything else. And that worked. Yes. And again, the, I guess you blocked out the theme, or maybe that wasn't in the original. But the theme was, it's above the vulture, which was, and it was done in, I forget what type, I put it in a type, was, and tonight we're going to party like it's 1856. Boy, Taylor, you really do need discussion in a history class. Occasionally. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful drawing, Taylor. Thank yes, you. It, yes, it is. Thank I you, like Ed, the Ed. eyebrows. Yeah. So here you have uh, Trump and Putin. Trump thinks, oof, Russia's got talent, am I right? And Putin thinks, he gets elected, this is going to be so easy. This was a, this an oldie when uh, Putin yeah. was uh, doing his election interference. That's great. That's really, yeah. that's really beautiful, Taylor. Well, you know, Trump said that he was the apple of Putin's eye recently. Yeah. He actually, <laughs> actually said that. What's the quote? He said he was the apple of Putin's eye. <laughs> <laughs> you like to draw Trump drooling. I did then. I kind of stopped doing that. But early on, I did that all the time. All right. So here you've got uh, Trump. He's got, the and... drool. He's got the drool here, too. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're you very consistent about the drool. And early on, so, I, I gave up on it, mostly. What what made you give up? Oh, because because people kept asking me about it. I said, well, you know, and uh, plus there's so many old drooling politicians now. I guess I could do them all that way. Well, I thought this was a nice one. And you got Mike Pence as his lap dog. But uh, Mike Pence is... Is uh, yeah, kind of pushed back a little bit. Well, Not quite. I would back in his lapdog days. Yeah, early lap. Yeah, he's trying to be president now. Decided to say some things. So um, you've got Trump's boys. One looks to be a stormtrooper, goose stepping, Eric. and the other one, Don Jr., is serving Trump steaks and okay. Trump wine. My goodness. Actually, neither my Ivanka or my Melania are particularly good, in my opinion. No, I, I, dis I disagree with that. I well, think they're well, great. Well, thanks. I, I've they're both better. good. I've done better but I, with that. But anyway, thank you. Okay. Here you've got Humpty Trumpty sat on a wall, or was it steel slats? A fence or nothing at all. Concertina wire, concrete barriers all laid end to end. Twas a perverse way to make America great again. Well, That's a well, lovely cartoon. Well, He's sitting on the border wall with Mexico. I think that um, not only Humpty Dumpty, but a number of Sir John Tenniel's illustrations for Alice in Wonderland, they've informed a number of my cartoons over the year. I'm sure they have, you know, they have for a lot of cartoonists. The Humpty Dumpty thing never goes old, really. Okay. <laughs> Here you've got Trump with Kim Jong-un. Trump says, he, see, I gave Kim one of my ties. And, and Kim thinks, or as I call it, America's path to capitulation. That's a great, that's a great Kim Jong-un. That's great. Like, that's he's, great. he's fun to do. Yeah, yes. his, hair, his hair is just ridiculous. You know, so many world leaders, Trump among them, are famous for their hair. Was it Margaret <laughs> Thatcher or Ronald Reagan? Boris Johnson. Oh, yeah, Boris Johnson. And not included here, I, I drew a cartoon with Trump holding Boris Johnson up. Boris Johnson is a, a big furry dog, and it was titled Dogs Who Look Like Their Owners. That's great. And, but it seems like that's a, that's a thing. You know, if you become 
big world leader, you got to have a, you got to be known for your hair. Okay. Here you've got Trump looking at his phone and Jared coming in with books, China policy, reinventing government, opioid epidemic, Middle East peace, the wall. Trump says being president's a dirty job, Jared, but somebody's got to do it. And it looks like Jared is doing the job of being president. Well, that was kind of a, that was early on in Trump's administration. That was a kind of a rap against, against Jared, that Trump was delegating anything hard to other, people other than himself. Very disturbing to think that anything was delegated to Jared. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've never seen a better Jared cartoon. Thank you. Thank you. This is a wonderful one. Well, of course, this is uh, this this was the famous Sharpie incident after Hurricane. Um, I forget which hurricane it was. I'm here in Florida, so I should remember. It's the one that plowed into Mexico Beach, I think, in the Panhandle. And mm -hmm. Trump came up with his own map with a Sharpie, and he made the one the the, the big loop up toward the top. Oh, left. right. Right. Was, that was Alabama. Yeah. And uh, I know a lot of cartoonists did the thing with the Sharpie. So I decided to actually just go a regular car caricature <laughs> and scribble it with Sharpie. And by the way, that scribbling was the hardest thing to do because I had to make it work. It could have been, it could have gone wrong. So you didn't draw that on an overlay or in your computer. No, you drew I, it with a it, Sharpie on right your... On I had to kind of plot it out in my mind and do a very little bit of pencil sketching over it. I couldn't really follow it too closely because you can't, it wouldn't work. You, you just couldn't follow those scribbly lines, you know. Uh, it looks spontaneous. Uh, it's Russian roulette cartooning. Yeah, exactly. So it worked, fortunately, I think. And Trump the bird getting fed a bug by the mama bird. Parasitic Albert. Trumpus Americanus. The eggs of the aggressive, fast-growing Trump bird are deposited in the nests of unsuspecting species, which rear it at the expense of their own chicks. Oh, he's a bad one. He's a bad bird, yeah. That's good. Well, I know, Taylor, Taylor, you love the uh, the nature illustrations. Well, thank, yeah, you. I, I think it's fun. I, I'm always telling Taylor that he should make every cartoon he draws a bird cartoon because oh, okay. you, you can't get enough birds. And, you know, so many of our cartoons are just discussion cartoons. Lots of them are old couples sitting in front of the TV mm -hmm. kind of cartoons. And why can't those just always be birds? There's no reason for them to not be birds. You're right, Daryl. And uh, I, I thought of saying doing nothing but a, a, a bird cartoons for a month or two. I mean, I, I have to say, I it won't be a, wouldn't be 100% birds. I like drawing primates too, occasionally lizards. <laughs> anyway, I'll, we we've had this discussion before. People love birds. I well, they do. So here you got Trump with the Kool Aid, and he says to the Republican leaders, "Just be quiet and drink this." That's they great. do drink the Kool Aid. I don't know if anybody tried to make the the top of the little orange hair there with the ice cube. I thought it was like a reflective thing, and I was trying to go. Like it's exact Trump. regarding the ice cube. One thing that we notice is that the conservative cartoonists tend to just not draw Trump. Just doesn't come out of their pen. I was thinking what a different podcast we would have today if I invited a conservative cartoonist on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I kind of enjoy having conversations between people that don't really disagree because the conversation tends to be more fun. We can get to, into more depth and discuss more things instead of just the same old friction. Well, you know what's weird? I mean, for years, you introduced me as your conservative cartoonist. Or one of for years, you were a conservative cartoonist. And I still consider myself to be conservative. It's just that this conservative movement has moved on to crazy town, and I didn't go with them. I still consider myself relatively conservative. I draw a lot of Biden cartoons. I'm just not this kind of whatever this kind of conservative is. Well, it's not really conservatism, don't you think? It's kind of, it's something else, you it's know? Well, li yeah. Liberals don't like Biden, too. I don't like right. I, liberals draw Biden cartoons. It's just the, the conservatives that edit themselves like that. I don't know if I... Well, you know, Daryl, I've said this before, so I'm repeating myself in my earlier podcast. But as I see it, this is very general speaking, but liberals, you can say, liberals satirize, conservatives demonize, at least in modern age. And liberal cartoonists went after LBJ. They certainly went after Clinton. We're not trying to prop anything up. Whereas I think a lot of conservative cartoonists, Rick accepted, are trying to, they're trying to protect something. It's become more of a cult than and a political no. party movement. It's, 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 the way, it's the way Trump uh, argues a, a point. You know, he doesn't argue a point. He delegitimizes. Here's one of yours that I'm sure didn't get printed just because. They don't like the Hitler references, yeah. and they don't like calling mainstream politicians Hitler, and they don't like the spittle. That's a great <laughs> image, though. Thank you. Well, Daryl, I think you need to fire me. But um, 
Oh, by the way, the spittle's not green in this one. This predates the little hands thing. This was done in 2015. It, it was afterwards that the small hands became a common reference. <laughs> and we're moving on to you. Here is Loser Trump. This is a wonderful cartoon. I wanted handy. to have some fun with the, the <laughs> typography, yeah. I did, I did a handful of those word cartoons. I think yeah. I did Chaos. Uh, I don't remember the other ones right now, but uh, had some fun with that one. Well, this is great. There's no bodily fluids. There's no Hitler, no KKK hoods. But you can make the point without all of that. <laughs> I, I like to, to try not to offend if at all possible. And you've got uh, Trump holding Uncle Sam out the window. Uncle Sam, identifiable only by his pants and spats. And Trump says, nice country you have here. Be a shame if anything happened to it. <laughs> a great cartoon. Thanks. I don't, oh, I don't remember the reason I did this, but... Uh, what reason do you need, man? Well, well it's pretty much every day. Yeah. A reason. yeah, it's an evergreen. It's another one for you to repost. <laughs> yeah. But that's another uh, pop culture reference, is it not, Ed? What do you mean? It was a movie where somebody threw, dangled somebody out the window, wasn't it? Yeah, Michael Jackson dangled comments. the baby. Or the uh, be shame if anything happened to it. That's, uh, that's a mafia thing to yeah. say. It's a generic yeah, mafia thing to say. Yeah. Where did that come from? Did that come from a specific... Film or just something everybody said. Everybody said, it. "Oh, this is great, Ed." Thank you, thank you. This is this is obviously after Pelosi's husband got attacked. This is the second cartoon I've done of Trump in bed, and <laughs> I, I like putting the hair, the bobby pins. <laughs> That's his good. Hair. <laughs> got... This is a very harsh cartoon, really. Him dreaming fondly of the hammers injuring Pelosi's husband. But even without it, it's just Island. stupidity. You know, just thinking. Th Dreaming stupid stuff. Stupid. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great. That's a great loose style, though, and I really like that. Oh, thanks. You know, hard hitting cartoon. So here so is cute. Trump as <laughs> raid spraying kills votes dead vote repellent. Uh, that's, that's fun. Great. Uh, you know, uh, as, as an aside, I actually worked on some of the animated commercials for Raid by, in my in the eighties. I love those raid commercials. You know, they look like Jack Davis designed them. Mad Magazine. -y. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, Jack I love those commercials. They were very fun to, 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 to draw in, uh, in, in motion. Oh, I didn't know you worked on those. That's fun. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love you've got a kind of a Grinch thing going in the, the Trump face as well. A Grinch grin. I think the mean, mean and sweet at the same time. And the orange yeah. of the can is just a delight. <laughs> right. Okay, this is... Uh, one that you just drew with uh, Trump on the golf course. He says, I was too busy to sort through the boxes. I'm a busy guy as he's out golfing every day. This is a favorite of mine because there's two Trump caricatures in it. That's awesome. Wonderful stuff. Thank you. Here we have Trump being carried away uh, on a little GOP elephant, but he is very big and heavy. He says, follow me in the wrong direction. And the GOP elephant says, getting tired of carrying you, yeah. bub. You know, this is not a broadly held view in the GOP. I wonder why. He's not, not helping. <laughs> well, a, little, I, a little wishful thinking in this cartoon. I think, yeah. Daryl, that it's not a publicly held view in the GOP. I think your establishment the GOP wishes he would go away, but they will not say it publicly. So a big difference between the establishment and the grassroots? That's what I think. Okay. Here we have Trump saying, I plan on running away from indictments as he speeds oh. along, leaving only his bobby pins behind. Another animation thing. What I'm thinking, is it Jackie Gleason or Dennis the Menace in uh, terms of running? Uh, that's a Jackie Gleason thing on the left, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's Jackie Gleason mm. posture. Yeah, right. But I mean, right. uh, And away we go. Right. Again, you have to explain who Jackie Gleason is, because <laughs> this is oh, for high school. <laughs> well, not to the readership, yeah. it's so old, the newspaper. Yeah, that's only a 70 year reference. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> only 70 years. That's true. It's the late 50s. We have um, another reference to uh, the character Witch Hazel with the, the spinning bobby pins on, on, on the zip out. Oh, I don't know I Witch know. Hazel. It's a Warner Brothers cartoon thing. She, ah. This character would go, and she would just leave a couple of bobby pins spinning in the air. I have to look that up. Oh, I remember that. Um, this is a podcast for Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's who the newspaper readers are, Daryl. We do know our audience, don't we? <laughs> Aren't we all grandpas here? 
Uh, not yet. Not yet. So here you go with uh, Trump about to hit the fan. Well, this this one this one definitely went crazy viral. Yeah, yeah, it did. On, well, it did on social media for sure. Well, it's a wonderful wordless cartoon. Listen, didn't, it's didn't, a great didn't, image, Ed. Thanks. It didn't take that long. <laughs> All right, explain this one to us, Ed. You've this got, is my most uh, recent one. I did this the other day. Well, you've got Trump playing the victim, and he's holding an orange card in front of his face with a sad face drawn on it, with all the people pointing their fingers at him because he's the accused. Is this a sad crying drawing with a Sharpie because he's hiding that he's not really sad? He's correcting everybody's impression. He wants everybody to know that he's he's just shocked by all the recent accusations. I think it's my second or third Sharpie cartoon. He's putting on a face of being sad when he's not sad. Yeah, for sure. And I was able to make his face orange. I just like being able to do that. Yeah. This cartoon, it's layered with the symbols, the symbols of the fingers and Trump covering his face. And The arm in the top right is especially well drawn. Arm oh, and hand. <laughs> I, you, you, you don't know. <laughs> I, I use the camera. Hard to to draw hands. hands are really hard. They're fun. If you do it right, they're, you're always pleased, you know. I'm so, pleased with myself that I do so hands well. Hands are hard. Okay, gentlemen, here we have a toddler okay. Trump dressed in turn-of-the-century toddler clothes, crying and stamping and saying, but I'm president, I'm president, no fair. Like little Lord Father, right? Yep. yep. Uh, grow up uh, with, with a privileged existence. And, the wine and the- Grandpa, who is Little Lord Fauntleroy? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that from the 30s? Yeah, we're, 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 we're a hundred year reference now. Yeah, maybe. This was uh, inspired by the Marx Brothers. Uh, Harpo okay. stealing the, the silverware. Oh, that's fun. You want to explain who uh, Harpo is? <laughs> the Marx Brothers were a comedy trio in the, in the early part of the 20th century. Well, this is, this is fun. So Marx you've got Marx. Trump with the silverware dropping out of his sleeve. You don't see his head, but you see all of them that you need to. And it says missing White House items found at Mar-a-Lago with the pile of silverware that he's sneaking out. This was... Uh, a 1930s movie trope where people would steal the silverware because they're all poor, but they would always have these interactions with things that rich people would do because movies were about rich people versus poor people. And uh, one of the things that you would do is steal the silverware. And so uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is for Ed, a Marx Brothers trope. An Ed trope. Okay. Kind of same. Ed. Rick's handcuff. Cartoon. Yes, this is a small hands in handcuffs on Trump's back. And uh, it's wonderful because you know yeah. everything that's going on with not having to draw a very explicit thing to describe it. The small hands in handcuffs. And I assume th- this was when he was booked recently. This well, was before know, he was arrested. Ed, it was before ask? he was arrested, yeah. Ed, can I ask you, rather than just assume that there's also a thought that because of the small hands, obviously able to get out of those cuffs, that he may end up slipping out of this whole thing. Was that also intentional? No, that was just a result of, you know, that's that's how it, that's what it looked like after I laid it down. <laughs> on paper. But it didn't make real sense. It made cartoon sense. But in a cartoon like that, Ed, I think probably, you know, you've done this long enough that you're doing it subconsciously, but, but readers like to be treated intelligently. You didn't need to show his face. You didn't need to show his hair and all that. You, you showed the bare minimum, and, and it's plenty enough for readers who are smart. And readers like to be treated like they're smart. They get it. One of, the, one, of the, one of the good things about, about it, having Trump as president is he's made of such fundamental symbols and colors. You know, he's got his own right. palette. You know, he's got his thing, right. the yellow hair and the big stupid hair. And Well, he wears shirt. the same color tie and he wears a blue same suit, suit. And red tie and you, and you can count on that. Yeah, that's deliberate. I'm sure it's deliberate. Well, the best cartoons have no words and have the least symbols and don't have labels. And okay, the- gentlemen, that's a, that sounds like a good place to stop it. Everybody come back to the next Kegelcast. Remember to subscribe and like wherever you're watching this, especially on YouTube. We would appreciate that. And we'll see you on the next Kegelcast. I think we're going to do a number of these favorite cartoons about Trump because the cartoonists have lots of Trump cartoons and now's the time to do some Trump bashing. So thank you, everybody, and I will see you next time.